It's an honor for me to be up here for the second time as chairman of the Georgia Technology Summit. It's an honor to welcome you all here. And one thing I'd like to get out up front, this is the highest level of sponsorship we've ever seen of this event, and this is a very well attended event. And I will ask you to stay all the way through today because there are some great things you're going to see. Um, this has been a, over the last 11 years we've built this event up. And um, every year it's gotten better, I believe. Last year we set the bar pretty high. I think what you're going to see today is the bar is going even higher. Um, so this year's, this year's theme is Innovation Economic Transformation. As the TAG Summit Committee got together and we just started talking about what this year's theme was going to be, we wanted to get the point across that our the current economic rut we're in, innovation is the solution and technology is the underpinning. So before we get started, I'd like to just say a couple of things about the people that made this happen. First of all, I'd like to thank the TAG Board of Directors. I'd like to thank the Georgia Technology Summit Planning Committee that, who made my job very easy the last two years. And I'd like to thank uh, Dennis Zakis in the Top 40 Committee who have worked tirelessly to put together this event. Um, I'd also like to thank Tino and the, the folks at TAG, Barbara Martin uh, particularly for helping make this thing happen. It, they, they've done a fantastic job. Before we get to the first keynote speaker, I would like to um, recognize some of our platinum sponsors. Um, First, Cherry Becker and Holland, if you guys will stand up as I announce you. Thank you. Cisco's here. Cisco's a platinum sponsor as well as providing a speaker today. Thank you, Cisco. Javian Consulting is here. I saw them earlier this morning. Primus Software. Pyramid Consulting, we, and Tino, I'm sorry, I got to do this. As a global leader in the communications industry, as well as, a, as an IT provider, Verizon is very proud to be a platinum sponsor here today. So I'll encourage you guys, again, to look through your programs, know that we've got an action-packed event today, stay through the whole thing as Frank, or the voice of God, as we call him, announces you to come back in, please come back, back in on time so everybody gets their full time to speak. So let's get right to the program. I'm going to bring uh, Sanjeev Tarath up to introduce our first speaker. Sanjeev is the CEO of Pyramid Consulting. He serves on the summit committee with me, and he's also a, um, a platinum sponsor. and good morning to everybody. We could think of no better person to kick off this morning's meeting. Tom Kolopoulos is the founder of Delphi Group, a global innovation think tank. Tom is a prolific speaker and author of eight books, including his latest, The Innovation Zone. Intel's senior fellow, Gene Meeran, said, The Innovation Zone is a book about hope, not hype and it's critical reading for anyone or any group serious about understanding and applying innovation ideas and concepts to generate value. Tom has been named one of industry's most in influential consultants by Information Week magazine, and his articles and insights appear frequently in national and international print and broadcast media such as Business Week, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Economist, CNBC, C CNN, NPR, and so on. Forbes has called Tom a business visionary who has an incisive view of the world, and Jeff James of CBS has called him one of the truly deep thinkers in the arena of technology and culture. Tom's work has also been praised by luminaries such as Peter Drucker, Tom Peters, who called his writing a brilliant vision of where we must take our enterprises to survive and thrive. 
and according to late Peter Drucker, one of Tom's mentors for many years. Tom makes you question not only the way you run your business, but the way you run yourself. Well, uh, uh, Tom has time for questions at the end of his session, and there are a couple of mics, I think, around here, so if you have any questions, you know, please go up to the mic at the end of his session, and uh, please join me in giving a big applause to Tom, Tom Kolopoulos. Good morning, Tag. Good morning, Tag. That's it. I like that. Thank you so much for being here bright and early. I was talking to a few folks before the, this morning session began, and I got some insights into a few of the people who are here in the room. Let me tell you before I even begin, I've got a very simple premise for today's presentation, maybe a theme for the entire day, and that is that the thousand or so people in this room right now are the thousand most important people in the world. Because if you don't believe it, no one else will. The baseline for innovation, where it begins, where it grows, is small and medium-sized business. Don't let anyone else kid you. Cisco's doing some wonderful things. Intel's doing some wonderful things. Verizon's doing some wonderful things. Innovation starts and it grows in small and medium-sized businesses. These are the engines of innovation. And you've all gotten here through circuitous routes. You've gotten here. Your career has been shaped over many years through factors and influences that you could never have predicted, right? Most of us in the technology space came to this space from someplace else. And we have a lens that we use to view the world. And what I want to help you today is to bring that lens to the surface. That lens is a core competency that you have as an individual. And I want to help you to focus on that lens. So I want to take you back. I want to take you back to when you were first making a decision about what your career would be. Do you remember those days? Sometime in the past, right? So my father, I'll share with you, my father was an engineer. And he was an engineer who was involved in a lot of the early days of technology. So he built microcircuitry, he built early computers, and I was always in awe of dad. So I made a promise to myself, when I grow up, I'm going to be an engineer. But I was going to build big stuff not small stuff. I was going to be a civil engineer. I wanted to build bridges and skyscrapers, not these little microchips. So I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I've made a decision. I'm going to be a civil engineer my senior year in high school. I'm going to be a civil engineer. And my father, who was always a wonderful, caring, loving dad, but as honest as the day is long, looked at me and said, Tom, you know what? If you built a bridge, it would be a very pretty bridge. I'm just not sure I'd want to cross it. And I thought, okay, all right, I'll show you. I actually went and applied to his alma mater, big Northeast engineering school, and I got accepted, much to his amazement and my own. And I told him, I waved, you know, the acceptance letter in front of him. I said, I'm going to pay for this, Dad. I'm going to this school. And I went to the orientation to see if I, along with my other engineering friends, would like this. And I had a bunch of buddies. We all wanted to be civil engineers. Went to the orientation, and I'll never forget at that orientation, this incredibly stern, curmudgeonly dean of the engineering school got up and told us what it was like to be engineers. And at one point, he went out into the audience, and he grabbed a chair. Excuse me. And he took the chair, and he said, what do you say? And we all looked at it, and we thought, well, it's a chair. He said, no, what do you see? As an engineer, you do not see a chair. And I thought, wow, this is good. This is why I came here. As an engineer, you see four vectors of force. And I thought, shit, dad was right. <laughs> this is not what I want to see. I don't want to see vectors of force. I want to see beautiful things. I didn't last long in engineering, needless to say. But I realized something. Years after that, I realized something. What he was talking about was the lens, the lens that we all use to build our future. And every single person in this room has a unique lens.